some people will be dying in 30 years in Canada because we have not been responsible today. Quote, in my view, climate change is the most severe problem that we are facing today, more severe even than terrorism. And I agree. And what Kyoto was was an acknowledgement that the rich countries are using far more of their share of the atmosphere. This government still has no action plan. During their eight years of dithering, CO2 emissions have skyrocketed. We are facing a global crisis, Mr. Speaker. It is transforming the very planet in which we live. Any delay in ratifying Kyoto means that our lack of courage will be paid for by future generations. There are no short-term answers, but to fight it, this government will use every tool available. We will decrease megatons, Mr. Speaker, of CO2, and we would make megatons of money with it, Mr. Speaker. I used to agree with these dramatic warnings of climate disaster. I taught my students that most of the increase in temperature of the past century was due to human contributions of CO2. The association seemed so clear and simple. Increases of greenhouse gases were driving us towards a climate catastrophe. However, a few years ago, I decided to look more closely at the science, and it astonished me. In fact, there is no evidence of humans being the cause. There is, however, overwhelming evidence of natural causes, such as changes in the output of the sun. This has completely reversed my views on the Kyoto Protocol. Actually, many other leading climate researchers also have serious concerns about the science underlying the protocol. So let's hear what you're not being told about climate change. The field of climate science is vast, and I should emphasize rapidly evolving. Many things we thought we knew about the climate system just a few years ago are now proving to be highly uncertain or quite mistaken. A common misconception amongst the general public is that temperatures are rapidly increasing. This is only with some of the surface data, and it's selected surface data. In fact, uh, if much of the surface data that's collected is from around urban areas or areas which have had significant land use change, and this data is contaminated. On the other hand, Satellites provide comprehensive coverage of the Earth 24-7 for the last 20 years. And so what they have demonstrated is that there has been an almost imperceptible rise in temperature over this time. But is there really much difference between temperatures in cities and that of the rest of the world? I did studies in Winnipeg 25 years ago. We were measuring the heat island of the city of Winnipeg and we found as much as 10 degrees Celsius difference between Portage and Maine, which is supposedly the coldest part of Winnipeg, and the airport uh, eight kilometers away. Most cities of the world are hotter than their surrounding environments. That has nothing to do with carbon dioxide, and it has everything to do with land use. What about the relatively warm year 1998? Was that global warming or a naturally occurring event, such as El Nino? Occasionally, when it is warm, everybody is saying, oh, it is global warming, like 98. It is not global warming, it is just El Nino. In 1997-98, we had a major El Nino develop at, at low latitude, and there was a tremendous amount of water vapor pumped up in the atmosphere, and we had a, a one degree Celsius spike around the world that was noted at that time that disappeared within a few months. It's not even uh, 25 years ago that um, the great threat was global cooling. You go back to the 70s and 76 and people like Ponty publishing books called The Cooling. And the scientific consensus then was that we were headed for cooling.